Hey, I'm Josh Lloyd with No Till on the Plains. We're out here uh, looking at my sheep and some animal impact grazing where I planted a perennial uh, to improve the soil and um, feed the sheep. Okay, so one of the things we're going to look at here this morning is we got three things going on. We have a paddock where they just moved from. Uh, a paddock that they got moved into this morning and then um, a paddock that hasn't been grazed and they've actually been through this field uh, twice this is the third time through since May 1st and you can see the amount of regrowth that we got um, I guess one of the things I probably need to explain is so I have 225 ewes their hair sheep um, with lambs that were born May 1st. There are about 600 sheep in that group. Um, what they get is, I got this electric netting. It's 164 feet long, so I'm two long by one wide. So if you take 164 times 164, um, I think that's like 0.6 acres. So having two long, they're getting about 1.2 acres per paddock and depending on kind of how much regrowth usually we're moving about twice a day just whether they need to or not so, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna come down close in on the on this mix tell us what what species are in this mix uh, well I'll do the best I can so obviously we got a lot of red clover there should be some, well, chicory is this purple flowered where it's bolted. Here's some that hasn't bolted. Uh, there should be some alfalfa in here. I think this is alfalfa. Um, then we've got like a, I think a fescue. Um, this mix is from Bear and Brug and been real happy with it. I think a lot of these varieties um, they take grazing well, um, they take the heat well, I mean it produces all summer where a lot of this stuff is is cool season. I mean we have been wet but um, I've been real happy with the growth. Those are the main things. There is some bird's foot tree foal and some other little things in here but that's probably what dominates the mix right now. So this was what they were on yesterday Josh? Yeah so they were on this up until probably this morning. So you can see where they continue to kind of eat. They'll even eat the bolted chicory a little bit. Because there's, you know, 600 sheep on 1.2 acres, you get a lot of trample. Um, you know, you can see how a lot of people would call that waste. If I don't consider it waste. You know, there's a lot of um, green there, and that's part of where the, the regrowth comes from is you got your solar panel you got the plant there and it will stand back up but if you if you you know completely grub it off or if we find a well this is a spot probably where I had a mineral feeder and you can see the ring um, around it if you really take it down you just you don't get you don't get the regrowth um, the same as if you if I just put a fence around it just set stocked them um, they're just they just constantly walk around and trample and they you know, cherry pick all the good stuff and their diet would go down over the summer and you'd never give anything a rest I mean it's they're on here and then by the time we get through this 90 acres it takes about 45 days okay so this is a paddock that that hasn't been grazed so there I mean you can see it's just, a lot of it's just what was in the other paddock other than, than standing and um, you know just how thick this and I, I guess this stand is two years old I planted it last or not last fall but the fall before that which would have been um, yeah somewhere around this time eight, uh, August middle August September just let it grow um, into the May spring last year put them on here, ran them through, took them off early just to make sure that everything went to the seed so, and to not stress it that first year so it could get established real well and then, um, and then yeah, this is the second year for it. So I'm, yeah, I'm real happy with 
the amount of amount of growth we get. The fencing, yeah, it's just uh, I think Premier One. I got it from American Grazing Lands, Jim Garrish. Um, you know, it just it's real easy to move. We set up basically. We set up. I got enough to do four paddocks, and so you can see one, two, three, four. We put the water in the middle so that we only have to move it every uh, every four grazing moves. Just helps save us time. You know, where they they have access to the water. I mean, 600 sheep basically are drinking out of a. a plastic, I can't remember if it's a 30 gallon, 50 gallon plastic barrel we cut in half and just put a, a float in the bottom. Um, but with the, yeah, with the fence essentially, like I said earlier, they get 1.2 acres every move and it's, it's, it's a little tricky at, at first, but you get, you kind of learn how to move it. So if we were going to, to move it, you just hold it and walk along start picking it up and then if you get to the end and you have a whole bunch here you don't ever roll the poles to it you roll this to it and you just put it in the back of the ranger and carry it around and then the same thing true unrolling is as you're going along you kind of walk and when you get to the point where it pulls you kind of know which one to let go and drop Once we kind of get it laid out on a grid, then it's pretty easy to keep going. And, and it can get a little tough in a drought trying to get some of them in, but I haven't ever had an issue where I couldn't get them in. And then you just, after I lay it all out, it helps you get it straight. Then I just go back through and step them in. So it's not, you know, time-wise, Oh, I'm going to say, you know, as you're moving them every day, if you stay on top of your wire and where, you know, the, that border fence over there, will, that whole one, two, three, four rolls will have double duty because we'll just start leapfrogging paddocks. And so you're really only moving uh, four rolls. So it maybe takes 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so what we're going to show here is part of the real lifeness of, of having livestock. Sheep are more difficult to kind of keep in than, than cattle. Um, but the key with cattle and then with sheep is if you have any bad players, you identify the bad players and they're gone. You don't, you don't tolerate them. Um, what happened here, though, was um, the dogs here lately, for some reason, I don't know if it's predators, it's, been, and it's probably their instinct a little bit, They've been crowding up at night, and you can see that throughout the whole the whole um, field. Where in the paddocks they'll get in a corner at night, and obviously they kind of got pushed up and and then went through. So we're gonna move water here real quick from this paddock to this one. And of course, like I said earlier, in a you know the they've grazed here, so the water was here. We try and move it in, so we only have to move hose every every four paddocks. So 
Uh, just come in here, dump my water, lift it up. I'm a little short. We'll see if I can hand pull. Yeah. I got it so that I guess to kind of explain how we're doing water um, yeah there's just a float on a string this is hooked to a to a hydrant um, I've got 500 feet and this HDPE pipe or no I've got five rolls of 500 feet for this HDPE pipe since around here everything's in quarter sections which is 160 acres that pretty much, if my water is in the center, which this is, it will get me everywhere um, in this quarter. The other one where I'm kind of towards one end, it doesn't get me all the way to the end, but it gets me close enough and I probably just need to add more water. And then I just use these compression fittings. That's what an end one looks like. splice looks like and um, I don't know I haven't used these yet I use I'm using a little different than what when I was talking to American grazing lands maybe how they envisioned it um, I could put I could just cap this and put this in the end and there's kind of a male and female hookup where once you put that in it lets water flow um, but it's really really simple works well that's one thing about having if not grazing it to the ground. I've noticed this year uh, the water doesn't get as hot because it's, there's more grass on the ground and it's laying in more, more grass so you don't get the heat from the sun. Here's the fencer. Like I said, it's not a, I mean, it's not a super powerful thing. It just, but it will bite you a little bit if, uh, if you touch it. Um, and where I'm moving them for the most part, they, they don't have a desire to, as long as they have food, they don't really have a desire to get out. Okay, so yeah, um, got two dogs. Um, they're half Marema, a quarter Great Pyrenees, quarter Anatola Shepherd. Uh, you really, you, around here, I mean, every place is gonna be a little different. We're not super populated. Uh, I don't have any problems with them running off. Um, I tried to use cattle to protect the herd in the beginning. And I don't have a problem with coyotes with the with the with the ewes, but I do where you have have to have a dog. I would say would be it's the lambs. If you don't have dogs, coyotes just come in and pick the lambs off. So the we reason I got the idea of a perennial break from the South Americans. The idea is to um, with a perennial. In order to build topsoil, you need constant living root, constantly harvesting sunlight with a plant. And so I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll plant it to a five year roughly break so that I break disease cycles, um, insect cycles, build soil. And then hopefully I've got a, a 55 acre patch that is coming out here um, this next week. Um, I'll have, I'll have to use less inputs. I mean, hopefully by the fact that I've built the organic matter, um, that that cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle will be built up enough um, that it will require very, very few inputs. And so what do you think will be the first cash crop that you plant back here? Probably soybeans. Like on that break over there, I'm gonna terminate uh, the grass that's left and then I'm going to plant a mix of rye, oats, and hairy vetch. I'm planting it now to get some growth here for maybe this, this winter, you know, this early winter, late fall. And I'll graze it all kind of through the, the fall and winter as much as it provides. Um, and then we'll plant it to beans in, uh, in May. 55 acre patch. This was my first uh, attempt at a perennial break. It was a lot of the same things that were in that other mix. Um, you know, you can still see a little bit of chicory 
it's uh, it was probably planted five six years ago, and it has been. It was my you know first attempt at learning at this. It was probably abused a little more than what uh, that, that hasn't been abused at all. Uh, I, I use this kind of as my my winter feedlot, if you will. Uh, I give them a little bit of stockpile um, and either unroll bales or you can kind of see where these weed patches are it's where I as I was I don't put up hay I put up waterways that we that aren't feasible to graze and then bring that hay in and would just set it around and space it around to give get even manure and urine distribution and then had a real light framed bale ring that I would stand up and roll from bale to bale and and then move a little fence so that they could, could just get two bales a day. But the idea then is that, you know, for five years, six years, I've had a perennial growing, I've had a constant living root, and I've been building struck, you know, building topsoil, adding carbon, constantly adding carbon in into the top layer and all that manure. I've been importing um, hay from the waterways. The waterways are where, you know, the terraces dump into so it catches excess nutrients and, and that sort of thing. Um, and from years past, when we did tillage 20 years ago, it would catch all the silt. So we're, we're taking all that, all that in the waterway and then we're bringing it back out here and, you know, adding and carbon that way. So I'm kind of excited to see you know, what this does as we bring it back into crop production.